Hello, everyone, and welcome to Everything Iconic with me, Danny Pellegrino. I'm so excited. We have the Star of Hairspray, which is celebrating its 15th anniversary. Nikki Blonsky. Nikki, how are you today? I'm good. I Every time somebody says the 15th anniversary, I'm like, what? Really? Right. It, it seems like it was just yesterday, most days. And then there are days when it feels like 400 million years ago in another lifetime. Um, so it's, it's definitely an interesting thing. I just can't believe that it's been 15 years since we've had that much fun. And since I got to wear a matching dress with John. <laughs> oh my God. It was so good. I rewatched it yesterday. It's on HBO max and it's still just as joyous. I remember seeing in theaters with my mother, my mom and I went together. I think, uh, what year was that? I guess I was just out of high school or in high school. Yeah, 2007. Something. Yeah, so I was. Um, I remember going with my mom, though, and it was such a, a joy. And not only is it the 15th anniversary of Hair Street, but Nikki, I don't know if you know this. You might not remember this at all because I know you do a, a million interviews, but you were one of the first guests on Everything Iconic when I started this show three, four years ago. I don't know, remember when it was. Um, so it's full circle. So we're we're well, coming back. Thank you so much for having me back. Yeah, thank you for it's coming. It's always nice to come back, you know, when the hosts are like, yeah, we like them back. I'm like, yeah, you did something right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, so I want to talk about this movie. Do you watch it when it's on? Like, it, will you flip past it if you see it on TV or will you put it on HBO Max? <laughs> so anytime the movie's on, I will get a surge of text messages from friends. Um, oh, hairspray's on E. Hairspray's on this. Hairspray, and I'm like, okay, great, yay! Like I'm, I'm excited, right? Because that means more people get to watch it. The people who didn't get to go to the theater, they get to watch it now at home. Um, but then I'm also like, but guys, if you think I'm gonna sit through it, yeah. like, because not. That I don't love it. I love it with all my heart, but I kind of just know the story by yeah. now. You lived so, it. Yeah, I lived it, yes. What about the other versions? Like when you saw the, did you watch the live version that aired? I think it was, I don't know what channel it was a couple of years ago. NBC. Watch- yeah. yeah. Maddie Balio killed it. Um, she was a fantastic Tracy, but my Tracy has always been Ricky Lake. Yeah. Always. Yeah. I mean, you know, Ricky, I've been a Ricky Lake fan since I'm a kid. Um, She was the talk show host that I ran home after school to watch. Tracy's was Corny Collins. Mine was Ricky Lake. and Mine was Rosie O'Donnell. I have a Rosie O'Donnell mug right behind me. I love her. Really? But I love Ricky, too. Rosie was on at 10, so I only got to watch Rosie when I was homesick from school, and it was my favorite part of the day. But Ricky was on at like three something, like right after school. And I remember in my little Catholic schoolgirl uniform, just like, I got to get home to see Ricky. Like, <laughs> And I, I loved her because she said what she thought. She called it like she saw it. But she was also a plus size woman in an industry history where my entire life I only saw people that didn't look like me. I saw skinny people that were beautiful, but I felt so not a part of that tribe. And then I realized that's because I wasn't meant to be a part of that tribe. Mm. And that was that became more and more apparent as high school went on. My love for Ricky continued. And I mean everything to her documentaries the business of being born and we the people i just think she is such a pioneer for plus size women women in general she stands up and she says what she feels and she doesn't care who says anything about it what politician has anything to say she's ricky and that's why i always adored her and then to get to work with her i mean you want to talk about mind blown mind Mine was so blown, it was down the block and around the corner. I mean, everyone that you worked with in that movie, I mean, Michelle Pfeiffer, John Travolta, Zach Efron, I mean, the 
cast is crazy but uh, you know speaking of ricky there's a song on the soundtrack mama i'm a big girl now and i i think that's like the best song on the so- like i love that song so much obviously good morning baltimore and there's you can't stop the beat are our fantastic songs but mama i'm a big girl now i remember i had just moved to chicago and i was like listening to it walking around the city and i i love that it's you and ricky and uh marissa and and harvey uh fire scene is on that and i wondered always like did you f- ever try to fit that in the movie was that ever filmed as a scene or was it always meant to just be on the soundtrack no it was never filmed as a scene because um in the broadway show that song is always sung by amber tracy and penny and when it came time to film they knew that they were going to have to cut certain scenes because it didn't cohesively work with the movie and when they got to mama and Bagel now they said well, Tracy and Amber and Penny are all in three completely different places in the movie. It doesn't fit, and we never filmed it. And then all of a sudden, we were, we finished the movie, still, you know, mixing up the soundtrack. And they said, Nikki, can you come in on a Saturday for to record? And I was like, yeah, but I thought I recorded all my stuff. And they said, well, you're going to have other people there with you. And I said, okay. And they said, you know Mama and Big Girl now, right? And I'm like, yeah, I saw the show, yeah. And they were like, well, you're going to do it with Ricky Lake and Marissa. And that was it. I was like, I get to sing with Ricky, be in a room with Ricky for (laughs) hours. Like, I was so happy. And we all went into... um, Capitol Records in LA, which as a singer, I would see pictures of that building in New York, a little kid on Long Island, just see pictures of Capitol Records and be like, someday I just want to sing in one of those booths. And that's where we recorded um, that song, My Movie Girl Now. And we recorded I Can Hear the Bells in the mm-hmm. same room as Judy Garland. She recorded Some Room or the Rainbow there. Uh. Nikki, I'm obsessed with Judy Garland. Like obsessed with I, I'm obsessed with Judy Garland too. So and good. as I'm walking in the room, it says there's a plaque of her and it says, this is where Judy Garland recorded Summer of the Rainbow. And I'm like, <gasps> oh I'm like, God. I shouldn't even be touching anything here. Right. This is like yeah, sacred space. Yeah. Yeah. When I saw um, the Renee Zellweger Judy movie, I couldn't shut up about it. Like I was just talking about it nonstop and my boyfriend and I got in fights about it because he's like, you need to stop bringing that up because <laughs> It was too good. But once you love something, you love it. I know. I know. Uh, You mentioned Broadway and I just have to get your take. Did you see the news today? All this funny girl stuff that's going on with Beanie and now Leah Michelle was announced to take over. What are your thoughts on this funny girl drama? I I have no idea uh, (laughs) what's been going on. I've I've seen a little bit of the, the stuff on TikTok, you know. I, I literally leave it up to my fans to clue me in on what's going on. Well, I'm a and fan they, and I'm cluing you in. It's Leah Michelle's in and Beanie is out for Funny Girl. Um, I personally have have nothing to say about other actresses. <laughs> um, all I know is I'm an actor and I know what I'm capable of. Clearly, Beanie was absolutely sensational because... Let me tell you something. I've met Barbara Streisand, and that is a whole aura. And for her to literally get the part and play it as well as she did on Broadway, I mean, I had friends calling from New York being like, she's phenomenal. So hats off to her, because that is one heck of a role to nail. Yeah. Um, I just, um, I feel for her, and... um, But I will say this to her. I auditioned for the Broadway show of Hairspray when I was 16. I didn't get it. They told me I was too young. And my grandmother always told me everything happens for a reason. Mm -hmm. So I feel extremely bad for her because I know that feeling. But I will tell her this. If she even knows that I'm breathing and alive, I will tell her that so many wonderful things are around the corner. And you don't even know what they are yet. So just get ready. So, and let that other person have her time in the shade and do her thing. I've always learned it. It's not, I've never been an envious person. I've always just wished well for others because I always believed that what was meant for me would come for me. Right. 
right? Um, when are we getting you on Broadway? I want to see you in Funny Girl. Would you play that role? Oh, I mean, uh, don't get me started. I mean, when I do my one woman show, don't rain on my parade is in there already. Okay. Um, so I need to see this. Uh, I'm just saying, you know, if they ever decide to, you know, do the movie musical, hello, I'm here, um, and, or whatever, you know, I, I've never ruled out Broadway. I always said, if I did Broadway, I'd want it to be just a totally epic role that either I originated or like, like you said, like a funny girl. And it's just, and Tracy was one of those roles. So it's like, I really, I just want to play roles that mean something, not just to me, but to people. And yeah, the audience, because that's people on Broadway wouldn't have a job if people didn't go see their shows. Movie stars wouldn't have jobs if people didn't support them and go watch their movies. So at the end of the day, it's all about the fans. I want to get back to Hairspray. Why do you think this movie just, or this story, I should say, keeps enduring? Because like we said, there's been other versions of it. And <laughs> everyone, I think, has their Tracy. Like you were my Tracy Turnblad, but I think oh, everyone you. sort of has their Tracy and, sure. and has an attachment to the story. And it seems like generation after generation, since the original movie came out by the brilliant John Waters, it seems like it keeps enduring. Why do you think that is? I think Hairspray keeps coming back and, you know, resurging almost with a new life every once in a while, whether it be on a new streaming platform or whatever. It's because I've, and I've realized this over time, Hairspray has such heart and it makes you, it doesn't just make you feel like, you're part of something, but it also teaches you an insanely important message. And unfortunately, as we've seen in history recently, that's still going on in today's world. There's still racism, there's still bigotry. There are so many things that we need to come overcome as a world. So I think Movies like Hairspray, with that message, but also with a positive delivery of teaching people, hey, you don't have to have a, you don't have to necessarily agree with my lifestyle, but Hairspray, I think, showed people respect, and Mm. that's that's a lot of what I took away from it, and that's why I loved it so much because I was a kid who grew up and didn't understand. Any type of hatred. I was like, why? Why would anybody be mean to anybody else? Because I was so heavily bullied in school. Mm -hmm. So I think that's why Hairspray has that resurgence all the time. It makes people feel good, but it also, you know, it's also a talking point. I know Mm -hmm. several teachers have reached out to me and they use it as a lesson, you know, in their classes. And when you do a movie that not just fulfills you, but it fulfills other people and inspires them, then you truly feel like, yeah, you did your job. It's got a bite to it too. I think the campiness of the original that kind of endures throughout all these other versions of it too. I think that's, uh, there's a a bite in the hilarity to it that I think is always Well, I think the music totally helped with that. Yeah, yeah. Because it was like, okay, here's a massive message, but we're going to sing and dance through it. And I think that's what invigorated people. Uh, I'm so fascinated by the press tour that you all did for Hairspray because I was on YouTube yesterday and I fall into these YouTube spirals and I saw the Today Show. You were all on the plaza doing these big performances. And then we were there for a week. You were there for a whole week, like doing rehearsals and stuff for a week. No, we did the whole summer series. Okay. Because there were a million performances. That, okay. That makes sense that you were there for a week. (laughs) And then I also saw, and this is, This is my lifelong goal. My dream is to be involved some way in the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade. I love it. I want to host, like I want to do with Meredith and Katie Couric. I love it. You are speaking my language. So you were on the 2007 Macy's Day Parade. You were on a Amica insurance float. (laughs) And I watched the performance. You sang, you can't stop the beat. I just, tell me about what was that like? Because the Macy's Day Parade is is truly iconic. I mean, being a New Yorker, I grew up 
as, since I'm a kid, when my mom would be cooking Thanksgiving dinner, she'd put me as, as a toddler in front of the TV, and I'd watch the parade front to back. Me too. I still, I'm going to be 34 next month. In a couple months, still watch the parade like it's my religion. Um, because it it makes me, it always just gave me the feel of the holidays, my family, family members that have passed. You know, so it just meant so much to me. And as a kid, I always dreamed but never told anybody that I wanted to be in the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade. Even if it was a balloon holder, I didn't care. I had to be in it. And when I got that call from Adam Jank, when he was like, hey, where are you? And I was like, I'm in New York. And he was like, perfect, stay there because you're doing the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade. And I was like, what? Like, I, I lost it. Complete. It was basically like telling a kid, go into Toys R Us. You can have anything you want. Yeah. Like, I was just like, <gasps> So were you was... so nervous? Then when you get on the float that day of, are you just out of your body? Is it, what's the feeling? I was so blessed because we had our incredible dancers from the movie on the float with us, the real dancers from the film. So we were all friends. Yeah. So I, all those nerves went away once I saw my friends. Because we were just going to do what we always did. We were going to yeah. perform You Can't Stop the Beat. And that was going to be it. And then when I got to the top of the float, and I was standing up there by myself, and they had just a little rail that I could hold on to. And as we started going down, it was like 60 blocks or something. And you hear they had speakers attached to the float. And just Good Morning Baltimore and You Can't Stop the Beat on loop. And we're driving down a city that I've only went to audition in or watch other people and shows in. And now I'm part of the main attraction. Like I was like, what? I, I was up there like, how is this my life? And then I started looking out to the crowds and I saw friends from high school that I hadn't seen with banners and posters oh, cheering me on. And I was just like, I had, the kids I used to babysit were hanging out their dad's like office window, wishing like congratulating me. I was that's so cool. Crying. Yeah, that's so yeah. cool. And out of all of those events, so today's show, Macy's Parade, there was the Golden Globe nomination, like all the stuff outside of the movie, I imagine would have run together for you a little bit because it, it must have just been nonstop. Um, yeah. So so was there one thing that sort of sticks out in terms of like the stuff outside of the movie? Does that make sense? Like, was there one event or one thing that kind of. That wasn't connected to the movie. That wasn't not the filming of the movie, but in terms of the release, oh. the, the aftermath of the movie, I should say. Well, I had never had a passport. I was, I had just graduated high school. I was 17. Uh, my only plane ride had been to Florida. Um, and then all of a sudden I got hairspray and I had to do a screen test in California. That was so exciting. Like my first time on the West coast, yeah. I thought I was so cool. Um, and but those were like little things. The most special thing for me about hairspray and this is honestly the most special thing, um, was like, it wasn't about where I went or where I traveled. It was who I was with. Mm -hmm. And my mom went every step of the way with me, every show. I mean, when I was up warming my voice up at three o'clock in the morning for the Today Show, she was taking it like a champ. I mean, you know, so... I think for me, that was the most special part, having her there during filming, having her there when I saw the movie for the first time. And another time that was pretty special was um, I did uh, Jay Leno, The Tonight Show, with Adam Sandler. Oh, that's and cool. Yeah. He was just so cool and so fun. And I was just freaking out because it's Sandler. Like oh, sure. he's he's like the only actor that I've been like ever since a kid, like dying to work with. Um, I want to ask about some of the people you did work with in this movie. Do you still keep in touch with John Travolta, Zac Efron, Amanda Bynes? Do you hear from any of these people? I know everyone wants to know about, you know, who you keep in touch with. It's funny who I keep in touch with. Um, 
So from Harrisburg, my main person has always been and always will be John. I mean, he, you know, you do movies with people and they play your parents or siblings and then it's over and you walk away. John has made it a point over these 15 years to be consistently in my life. If I have a question, if I need advice, I text him right away and he answers right away. And he's one of the busiest people on the planet. So when my friends don't answer me, I'm like, excuse me. Um, the man's driving a plane and he can answer me. You can answer me. <laughs> but um, he is honestly, he's my main person that I keep in touch with. I saw Brittany Snow a few uh, years ago. Um, we were both at the Nantucket Film Festival giving Leslie Dixon, the writer of Hairspray, a Lifetime Achievement Award. And it was so great to see her because we never had a Tracy Amber relationship. It was more just like two yeah. pals. So it was nice to see her. Um, and yeah, I, I unfortunately haven't seen uh, anybody else. Yeah. Um, I'm always fascinated by people and the roles they almost got or just were close to getting, you know, I always love imagining a movie with somebody else. And I wonder, are there any roles that stick out in your head that you were like close to getting that you might be able to share? Like you were almost this person or almost, does that make sense? Oh yeah. No, there have been definitely some roles. Uh, ones there have been roles that have been offered to me that I've passed up because I didn't feel like it morally aligned with my work and the rest of my body of work oh like so what like, can you can you tell me i can't say the name okay. um, a hint but a hint? uh it was one word <laughs> a musical, it was movie one musical? word four letters one let's word? see oh <laughs> but so there have been several things over time and i've always felt like and when that movie that i was talking about came out i was like okay all right i didn't take it because it didn't work for me. And at the end of the day, you want your body of work to just embody you and say something what's you in of. your heart and something that you can be very proud of. And so I watched the movie. I thought it was phenomenal. Can and you tell I was, me one person who was in it? Because I can't think of it. No. <laughs> Please. I can't. Can you sing a song from it? I, there's no songs in it. Maybe okay, that's oh, so why it didn't speak to me. <laughs> okay, so it's not a musical. It's not a musical. It's a I was word. like, where's the music? Yeah. Um, but no, obviously I've done okay. other movies that are just straight dramas. Like I have projects coming out that are very dramatic and there's no music. I So I don't just do yeah. musicals, but I, I just, it wasn't for me. And that all goes back to my grandmother's teachings of what's meant for you is meant for you. And whatever will be, will be. And i that's honestly how I've gotten through a lot of my life. Because why cry over spilt milk? Right. The you movie's can't, made. You can't I can't, it. Go, back you can't and go back. So just keep plugging forward. God, now I want to know what it is. I'm going to be spending the whole night thinking about what it was. Well, it wasn't, uh, let's see. It wasn't any. Uh, was it a big Well, hit? I was up for a role against The Rock. And I lost. Wait, so. it was, wait, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding with you. I was like trying. That to would really it. gutted me. Um, okay. I love that man so much. By I the way, that. he's the best. He's the best. Uh, okay, I know you're a Housewives <laughs> fan. Do you still watch Real Housewives? Are you a Housewives fan? I watch every. Uh, my girlfriend and I watch every single episode of every Housewives branch, and um, I sometimes watch them two or three times just oh. so I get all the information you're talking to the right person um so Salt Lake City did you see today the breaking news that Jen Shah pleaded guilty in the case so she changed her plea to guilty did you, you didn't see this no yeah it was breaking news it's huge a huge story in the Housewives universe she changed her plea to guilty so now her sentencing will be I believe in November we'll find out what the sentencing will be but she admitted guilt to all of to, I think a lot of the stuff, I don't know about every count, but she admitted guilt to bamboozling the elderly. Thoughts? Anytime that an elderly person is victimized or 
um, a child or anybody, but especially when you attack the elderly, that's when I really have a problem with it. Um, I don't know her. I have not run into her in Utah. Um, yeah, you're in Utah. I am in Utah. Um, I haven't seen her. I frankly don't care to, because I think, I think, uh, she knows what she did is wrong and she can buy everybody and their mother Louboutins and Gucci purses until she's blue in the face. It doesn't make up for what you do wrong. So you, you have know. you run into any of the Salt Lake city wives in Utah? I have not run into any of the Salt Lake wives in Utah. Maybe I need to like, just like pop by beauty lab and just like flip my hair a few times and be like, Oh, Heather. Hey girl. Go see Heather Gay at the beauty lab and laser. I know. Um, Are you watching my favorite? She's the best. She's the absolute best. Are you watching the ultimate girls trip? Absolutely. Okay. Okay. Give me, I need to know your thoughts. Isn't it, is it not the best show ever? Like it really is the best show ever. It, it, It really is because those are some strong personalities in one house. And I know it's only eight days. It seems like they've been there for eight months. <laughs> They're like clawing at the windows. They're like, let me out. I'm like, you're in a manor, a mansion with a butler. Okay, you're okay. Yeah. Um, I love it. I do it's think. excellent. I'm obsessed with Eva. Me I think too. she is the chillest housewife ever. I Easy was like, crazy. Easy yeah. breezy. She found her dispensary. She was happy. I was like, yes, queen. Right. Um, I and want her then, back in Atlanta. I feel like it's time to bring maybe, and maybe Phaedra back too. I don't know. I, I don't know. It's kind of controversial about bringing Phaedra. I, how fun would Eva be on Potomac though? Oh, I'd love it. I'd love it. Does I could just ever, see her yeah. like setting Giselle, putting her right in her place. I would love, I to, do see, love Giselle. I would love to see her on anyone. I just, on, I, I, I'm finding her so refreshing on that. What do you think of a Dorinda? I know you were a Dorinda fan before and a lot of people it's, it's tough. I'm, I was a Dorinda fan too. I am a Dorinda fan, but it's been a tough couple of weeks for us. Look, it's, it's been a tough, it's been a tough couple of weeks for Dorinda. I think, I think Dorinda is, um, she's such a strong woman. She's been through tons. Um, and you know, she's managed to like, keep that manner going and everything. So still hats off to her. Um, I think she went so above and beyond to try and like organize everything and like make it nice. And then Brandy came in and well, um, you know, but I just, I, you know, I think her heart is in the right place. Her martinis might not be not sometimes, in the right place, yeah. <laughs> but she, I think she has a good heart. But honestly, I I will watch anything with Jill Zarin anytime. Yes. Nikki, I know I got to wrap this up. So I just, first of all, I want to say congratulations on coming out. You came out on TikTok. I believe it was last year or something. So welcome to the LGBTQ community. Um, that, how are you feeling now that that's, I was going to say now that that's done, but how does it feel to sort of be publicly out? It's, it's really nice to be publicly out. It's nice to be able to go and... Um, it was funny. My my girlfriend and I were in the grocery store, and she was like, "Oh my god, people are looking at us!" And I thought it was because we were holding hands. And I was like, "Oh well, then I'll." And she goes, "No, it's because Hairspray's the number one musical in Utah, and they know you're." Here. Oh my god! And I was like, "Oh," but I mean, for me, it just yeah, it feels really nice to be able to just be out, say what I feel. And I've always encouraged my fans to be themselves. So it was time I practice what I preached. Uh, Nikki, to end this, I just want to do a very quick lightning round, just quick answers, whatever comes to mind. Sure. We, this is actually a repeat of the lightning round we did the first time you were on the show. So I wanted to All just, right. we'll see, we'll see how it goes. Favorite John Travolta movie. Uh, Saturday Night Fever. The Hills or Laguna Beach? Uh, the Hills. Favorite memory of working with Amanda Bynes? Um, <laughs> she had to eat so many lollipops. I'll never forget. She went through like those sleeves of lollipops. She'd be like, could somebody hand me another sleeve? I would just <laughs> laugh every time. Oh, I love that. Uh, favorite Mariah Carey song? Oh, my gosh. Uh, well, other than All I Want for Christmas is You. 
you know, but, um, probably, I'd say, uh, obsessed. So good. Why are you so Why obsessed you with me? so obsessed, obsessed with, with me? me? Uh, okay. Favorite Michelle Pfeiffer movie? Ooh. Um, hmm. I loved her as Catwoman. She's my favorite. The best. I almost wore a Catwoman shirt. I had it. I was going to wear it. Uh, Okay. Brittany or Christina? Oh, gosh. Christina's vocals, Brittany's songs. Favorite hairspray song? Favorite hairspray song? Um, I'm going to have to say, being that it's the 15th anniversary and this is the song I practice most, Good Morning Baltimore. (laughs) So, so good. Uh, Favorite curse word? Oh, can I say it? Yeah, of course. Fuck yeah. Uh, fuck. Fuck motherfucker shit. Those are what I usually say when I lose my phone. <laughs> uh, what's next for Nikki Blonsky? What is next for me? Okay. So I have two movies coming out this year. I'm super excited. One is a Lifetime movie. I play a lawyer. Very different for me. Love so it. I'm super pumped that Lifetime gave me the chance to be like, hey, be serious. And I was like, hey, as yeah. they should. It was so fun. And then I have another movie coming out called Bosco, which is a movie based on a true story. It's about a man named Quante Adams who gets put in prison for uh, the sale of pot, but for like 35 years. His fiance is pregnant. It's all a true story. And he finds a way to not break out of just county, but federal prison. And I. Am the one who maybe breaks them out. Oh my God. Prison break starring Nikki Blonsky. I love it. I love it. Yeah. It's, it's pretty, Nikki. it's, it's definitely one that's going to keep people going. There's, I had to do a car chase. It was fun. It was so fun. Nikki, I love that you're doing these serious roles, but also I'm going to need you to sing. I'm going to need you on Broadway. I'm going to need you to be in another movie musical. Can you take us out with a little, uh, a little bit of a song, a little bit of a, you can't stop the beat or a good morning. Or, okay. Sure. Okay. Oh, uh, let's see. Welcome to the 60s. Oh, uh, oh, uh, oh, uh, oh, uh, oh, oh. Go, Danny. Go, go, go. Ah, a dream come true. Nikki, thank you so much for taking the time. The 15th anniversary of Hairspray is this year. Everyone go watch it on HBO Max, pick up the DVD, the Blu-ray, whatever you got to do to get it, rewatch it. We all need some joy these days. And I just rewatch it and it's truly... It, brings the most joy. So Nikki, thank you for your work and thank you for taking the time. All my love. Thank you so much. And if anybody needs to find me, they can always find me on Instagram at Nikki Blonsky. And you can always find me on Cameo for personalized videos. And I sing in all of them. So and you're on TikTok too. I love following you on TikTok too. Oh yeah. yeah. Occasionally I bust a move on TikTok. Oh, I love it. Thank you, Nikki. Have a great thank day. Thank you. Bye-bye.